I'm going to kick off episode seven. And it doesn't have a title yet because usually we come up with the title through our conversation. So we'll, we'll see right. what that's going to be. And uh, so today I have with me Rachel Galan. And uh, she works at uh, Caddo Mounds State Historic Site. That's correct, right? That's the title. That is it. Caddo okay. Mounds State Historic Site. Perfect. And we have long been collaborators, I think. And I like using the word collaborator because it sounds like something underground or I don't know. <laughs> like well, you know. Sometimes it feels that way a little bit. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, so we've been co- collaborators for a long time and I love getting to talk to you and I haven't had a chance to lately. So I thought I would invite you to be on the podcast and, uh, get a chance to chat with you. <laughs> Which sounds like a great idea. I certainly miss yes. to, uh, see you and collaborate on things. So this is awesome. Yeah. Great. Well, we're going to start off. First of all, I want to, I want to mention, um, you know, we're still in the library, or I am, you're not, you're, I'm not here yet. No, but, sadly uh, not in the library, yeah. Yes, and uh, what we have going on here is we've actually opened partially, we're having uh, people that are able to come in for uh, pickup, they order ahead, and then they can pick up books, and so that's what's going on here right now, but we're not open to the public just yet, and so my job has completely changed in the last few months. Uh, I used to try to get as many people as possible to come in the library. Uh, and so now, obviously, you can't do that. So I have to reach them in a different way. And so that's kind of what brought about this podcast and some of the other things that we're doing now so that uh, we can still respond to the public's needs. Uh, so my week this week has consisted of making a trailer for summer reading, which is kicking off, well, it's officially kicked off, but our video series is starting next week. And so we did a, a trailer that has the staff um, gearing up for our fairy tale theme. So we've got swords, princess hats, castles made out of cardboard, uh, very silly stuff. And it's mostly for kids. Um, and so hopefully, well, we plan to also have some things for adults as well. But right now we're focusing on the kids because that's the biggest part of summer reading is keeping kids reading while they're out of school. And that's especially important since they've been out of school for a much longer time. So uh, we try to find ways to incentivize, you know, continuing to read. And I'm proposing that some of our things for our adults are going to include some of the outtakes from these videos that we're making, uh, which is, they're pretty hilarious. So Maybe to only only to us, but we're going to find out. So <laughs> we're going to put that out there. And uh, in fact, maybe if we have time, I'll let you hear a little clip from yesterday if you're interested. Uh, uh, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're very silly over here. Um, but we also we want to hear from the people about what they want. So everybody's encouraged to email and call and Facebook message us. We're very we're very much here um, all day and and answering messages and you know we're, we're public librarians so because we want to serve the community's needs and it's, now it's just in a different shape and so we're going to keep trying to do that whatever shape that takes and you also serve the public um can you talk a bit about what you do and and uh how that's changed <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it has changed. So I'm, I am um, the assistant site manager at Caddo Mounds. Um, and we are an early a prehistoric Caddo Indian site and Caddo Indians were um, some of the first people of Texas. And that's where we get the name Texas. It comes from the Caddo word Texa, which means friend. And then the Spanish took that to be Tejas and then it became Texas. So they are actually who gave us our name. Um, but we work to preserve the land. There's about 400 acres out of Caddo Mounds. There's three big um, earthen mounds that the Caddo built over a thousand years ago. Um, and we tell that story and their story. And they're, we're still associated with the Caddo people. They're a living, they're a living people. Um, and so they're very much involved in our site and um, how we tell their stories. We have a museum right now. It's a temporary museum. We had a beautiful grass house 
Um, but April 2019, the site was all of the buildings, all the structures were completely destroyed by a giant EF3 tornado. So we are in the process of figuring out um, rebuilding and healing um, personally and our, you know, ourselves and our community um, and mm -hmm. what that looks like. Um, we're in the process of working with the Historic Commission and um, architects and builders to rebuild the museum out there um, and learn to live in this new world. So for <laughs> all of us working, um, <laughs> you know, and jobs where we're used to working with the public and offering programs and doing things. We're now looking at how to do that in a really meaningful, rich way virtually. Um, so, so it's a lot of, um, a lot of adapting, a lot of change. And, um, but, but I'm super fortunate because I have a beautiful 400 acre social media as part of my job. So I run around mm. taking pictures of beautiful things and we have a 50 by 50 foot education kind of interpretive garden snake woman's garden so i spend a lot of time in the garden too so that's pretty awesome <laughs> yes it's beautiful I, I love every day seeing the posts from the site they're gorgeous yeah it, and, it, it's a it's, yeah, a, it's, it's a really wonderful place to be <laughs> yes for sure and i if anybody is not already following um Cato mounds on social media do that because there's really great photography and of course, updates on all the cool things that you're doing out there too. So, yeah. Well, I have my first uh, book recommendation is actually uh, sort of had you in mind. Speaking of the site, the, there's a book coming out in July and it's called The Well Gardened Mind, The Restorative Power of Nature. Mm. And, <laughs> and it's by Sue Stewart Smith who I'm not personally familiar with, but mm -hmm. she's uh, a psychiatrist and the book is about the healing effects of gardening. So I definitely thought I would recommend this one for you. Yeah, I can attest to that. I, I, I spent <laughs> a lot of time in that garden <laughs> and it is healing. Yes. yes. I have um, a little garden in my windowsill, <laughs> which is about the extent that I get to do it. But I do, I love it. I'm actually there's an app called Planta and it, since I don't know much about that, I uh, use the app and it tells me what I need to do for the different plants every day. So um, I've really gotten into it. I want to expand. Nice. And I, I've kind of gotten in the habit of when I'm re recommending a book or talking about a book, I quote the epigraph if there is one. And uh, this one has a, actually a couple of the ones I'm going to recommend today have great ones, but um uh, this book has, uh, quotes Goethe. It says, um, all truly wise thoughts have been thought already thousands of times. We must think them over again, honestly, till they take root in our personal experience. And I really feel that very, very much. Um, I have to prepare myself for changes and things like that by just sort of dwelling on it as long as I can <laughs> until I finally accept it. Cause I, have a tendency to wake up in the morning and it's a brand new day and I forget all of the things <laughs> that have <laughs> impacted me <laughs> previously. Hey, well, you're so, welcome uh, to come dig in our, our big garden because um, it gives you plenty of time to dwell. <laughs> and, and <laughs> yes, I would love to. I would, that would be great. I'm going to take you up on that for sure. Uh, the next one that I... Um, have been reading and both of these are ones that I've uh, ordered for the library in case anybody's uh, hopeful or interested in these. Um, the next one is slow down the end of the great acceleration and why it's good for the planet, the economy and our lives. And uh, this one just came out in May and basically it can, um, it compares society for the past several generations to a train that's been speeding up. And so now our generation is really comfortable with that previously totally unimaginable rate of speed. And uh, we kind of expect it just to keep getting faster and faster. And, um, but this author, um, Danny Dorling, argues that we're actually entering a slowdown in terms of um, population growth and all that kinds of thing. And so, he thinks that it's the end of an era of 
the kind of exponential growth and technological advancement that we've enjoyed for the past couple hundred years or several generations. And so it's really thought provoking. I don't know. I mean, and he even sort of admits that obviously he, that he's not like predicting the future or saying that this is exactly what's going to happen, but it's, you know, it's exploring those ideas. And so it's, it's really interesting. I would recommend it for sure. Cool. Yeah. And then the, the next one I'm, I'm finally getting around to reading. It was one that was suggested to me uh, by our mutual friend, uh, Jocelyn. <laughs> and uh, she's been, every time I see her, she's like, have you started this book yet? Spreading so, Sweetgrass? No. No? That is, is that? That, is, that is also one of those. That's a good guess, though. Everybody has recommended that one, too. Um, but it's called Winners Take All. Um, the elite charade of changing the world. She so has recommended, no, but she has recommended that to me too. So I, I, <laughs> I probably should read that. Too. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I'm winning in this case. So Jocelyn, <laughs> if you're out there, I'm reading the book and Rachel's not. So, <laughs> but uh, it's by Anand uh, Yerdotis or something. I think that's how you say it. And so here's the epigraph from this one, which I think is, like the perfect summary of what the book is about. Um, and it's from Tolstoy. And he says, I, I sit on a man's back, choking him and making him carry me, and yet assure myself and others that I am sorry for him and wish to lighten his load by all means possible, except by getting off his back. So, uh, anyway, I think that that is a good summary for that one. I, If you're interested in that kind of thing, this, um, the author is... Uh, He's a New York Times um, journalist, and he really does like an in-depth uh, analysis of, of the idea of um, the elite sort of being saviors of, of our society when they really don't actually intend to do that at all. So a little political on that one. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and uplifting. Be... <laughs> huh? Political and uplifting. Right, exactly. Um, so I'm interested to know what you're reading these days. So um, I'm reading like five different books. <laughs> yes, I, I do the same. I, I have a lovely commute to Caddo that's 40 minutes. And so it's amazing um, listening time. So that's where I get in my mm -hmm. podcast and audiobooks. So um, I guess going with the political line, I am listening to How to Be an Anti-Racist um, by Ibram oh. X. Kendi. And it is um, truly really wonderful. I mean, it's really difficult because it um, causes a lot of self-reflection, but I guess that's the point. Mm -hmm. um, so, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and so I, I tend to, when I find someone I, I like, I, I stalk them maybe on podcast <laughs> as well. So <laughs> I, um, I've been listening to, he's got a really great podcast with Brene Brown um, that, that I've listened to. Oh, yeah. But, um, and then I am in a book club and um, Anne Collins Smith, who is a philosophy faculty at the university, this was her recommendation and it's called Uprooted and it's science fantasy and it's, it's actually been a lot of fun. So my husband and I are actually reading this one aloud. It's by Naomi Novik and it's, sort of a coming of age story about this um, young woman named Nishka who um, there's some great analogies in here with things we're going through now. There's this wood that is um, it's corrupting. We don't know why yet because I'm not done with it, but um, it corrupts people either and they, they either go crazy or they don't really know they're corrupted, but they start thinking, you know, um, not great thoughts. And, and, and uh, it's kind of a very interesting um reading at this particular time in our world <laughs> yes <laughs> and I am um, a bit of an herbalist so I, I like um, I like wild food and medicine I really like the weeds because I don't actually have to um, grow them like I have to do things in the garden so I'm <laughs> much much better with that um, so there's a there's a, a new book called Wild Remedies by uh, Rosalie de La Flore, uh, Flore and Emily Hahn that's really great with um, all different weeds that grow around here and recipes and 
medicine and all sorts of fun stuff. And then there's a book by Kimmy McBride called The Herbal Kitchen, which is great because you can just mix up healing um, herbal sprinkles and honeys and things that you can just have in the kitchen on your table. So those are kind of nice. Yeah. And the last one that I'm listening to before I got sidetracked with how to be an anti-racist <laughs> um, <laughs> is uh, Courting the Wild Twin by Dr. Martin Shaw. Um, myth and folk tales and fairy tales are um, sort of a passion of mine and they kind of go hand in hand with the job I do. Um, and so mm-hmm. I've been spending um, time with his books and stalking him on podcasts as well. <laughs> Cool. I have not heard of that. So I'm going to check that out for sure. Yeah. He has this courting the wild. Yeah. And he has this great um, essay that you can look for that he talks about how he thinks we are in underworld times. Um, And so that's kind of fascinating. (laughs) Wow. That's awesome. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I guess it's, it's an awesome concept maybe not so much reality yeah. but, um it does tell dovetails really nicely with uh my movie recommendations actually because i was just uh speaking with a co-worker emily actually who um does the podcast with me and i my favorite pastime even more than recommending books to people is recommending things to watch in movies especially and so we somehow came across, or I, I just recalled this movie that I hadn't thought about in years. It's called um, Shallow Grave. Mm. <laughs> and it's from 1994. It's directed by Danny Boyle. And it's very dark comedy um, with Ewan McGregor and Christopher Eccleston. And, it, 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 and if you're into dark comedy, you will love it. If you're not, you might not be, you might want to skip that one because it's very dark, black dark, you know? Um, and then when we were talking about that film, it reminded me of another movie from this one from 1995 uh, called Last Supper. And uh, have you seen either one? Of I those? have not. Okay. So yeah, they're kind of Last Supper especially was super indie and, and Shallow Grave was as well. And that was in the mid nineties. I was like, super into film I watched every single thing that came out that I could get my hands on so um this one is uh has Cameron Diaz and like one of her early roles and um Courtney B Vance um anyway it's it's they're both very good the shallow grave is about these three roommates who have um they add a fourth or a flatmate I guess and uh that flatmate dies and then hijinks ensue but um the the other one is about this group of um young people again it was very trend very trendy thing i guess at the time for the people to live together and uh is they're like graduate students and very liberal and they run across this guy who's who's like i think his truck broke down or something and so they invite him in for dinner and he turns out to be like a really violent vile person you know and they accidentally kill him and then they have to hide it and then more hijinks ensue after that so like I said very dark um, but they're both funny and smart and from the mid 90s which I like to you know look back on (laughs) it's like a snapshot of a part of my life I guess Um, and then I also I, I haven't mentioned many shows in the podcast from that have been on Amazon Prime but I kind of have, I kind of go in waves, like I'll watch only Netflix for a while and then Hulu. But lately I've been watching Amazon Prime again and um, Fleabag is a show that you can watch there. It's, it has two seasons. I've almost um, started that several times. <laughs> yes, you should. It's very unusual and wry and it's based on uh, Phoebe Waller-Bridge um, did a one woman show. And then the show is based on that character. And uh, anyway, it's it's also pretty dark, but it's hilarious. She's really dry and um, it, she speaks directly to the camera throughout. Like 
in just the middle of a scene, she'll just turn to the camera, which sometimes takes you out of it. But, I, you know, in this case, I think it works really well. So I recommend that for sure. And uh, same thing with Catastrophe, which that is That I've watched. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Have you, are you? No, I haven't seen the latest season. season. Okay. Yeah, I, I watched, I think it's the fourth season. I finished that, but it, I really enjoy it. I love the the lead actor. I think he's hilarious. Although that show is not always. I hilarious. know. <laughs> Only sometimes. I've got a, yeah, I have a theme going with my stuff. Too. It's all dark stuff <laughs> lately, but darkly funny. So maybe that, I think that kind of describes me per, as a person anyway. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> But the other one that I just, I'm just starting season four of this one is uh, The Man in the High Castle, which is really well done, I think. But what have you been up to? What have you been watching or listening to? Well, let's see. Um, so, <laughs> I, not dark. Uh, my husband and I have been transitioning to, <laughs> you know, um, life. He was, um, for those of you who don't know us, he was critically wounded in that tornado. So um, he was in the hospital from April until February and is now living life as a quadriplegic, which is a huge adjustment in life. So what time I have for television um, is not dark. <laughs> so we, we, we watched, um, we just finished the um, PBS masterpiece, the Jarrells and Corfu. And that was actually really oh, great. Yeah. If you haven't seen it, um, it's 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 about so there. Uh, I haven't. But... Yeah, there. You know, there. It's a. It's based on truth on a real family, and um, I felt like an idiot when I didn't realize that. Um, and a, a a book that Jerry Durrell wrote called "My Family and Other Animals," but they <laughs> the matriarch of the family she her she's widowed and she picks up and moves her family right before the start of world war ii to corfu in greece where they sort of live in paradise and this crazy eccentric lifestyle and it's a really fun series um so there's four seasons of it um, and we watch that and then pretty much through this whole ordeal since april i um have developed a thing for um british mysteries i don't know why um <laughs> i've gone through quite a few british mystery series um and so <laughs> um, emily has a, a subscription to acorn yeah TV. i've done that in you... britbox and i've gone back and forth um because they switch off where the episodes are. It's super frustrating. Um, oh. But um, right now we're watching Inspector Lewis. Um, but I've been through many. Um, but I will say that there's one um, called My Life is Murder. Um, it's set in Australia. And, um, oh, my God, I'm blanking. Lucy Lawless, who played um, Xena. She's the, oh, yeah. she's the yeah. lead. And um, she's awesome. I didn't realize it. She's yeah, fantastic. she's fantastic. And I didn't, you know, I just pictured Zena, but um, which I will admit I watched <laughs> in the day. Um, but um, <laughs> that one is totally worth it. Yeah, it's cool. a really good one. And um, yeah, I love her. Yeah. So other than that, if there's a time for a movie, it's something kind of um, nostalgic in 80s or um, so because that's my nostalgia time. <laughs> Ah, yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely immediately go back to 90s and, and the 80s, too. Like, those movies are just, you can watch them over and over again. Many, many times. <laughs> <laughs> we, the um, the Jarrells of Corfu, we have it as a DVD uh -huh. in the library, and that has been so popular. I've seen it just going out all the time, and I thought, well, i got to jump on that bandwagon some point. Yeah, it Obviously. It's really worth it. And then um, there's a, when it ends and you're sad, because you will be, um, there's a, there's <laughs> like a follow-up on what what the Durrells did next or something like that, um, that they actually talk about the real people oh. and, you know, their crazy continued eccentric lives later. I mean, you know, one is a world famous author. I should know that. Um, one's like a, a <laughs> really big in the world of naturalists and zoos and animal um, working with is saving um, endangered animal species. And I mean, like it's it's just it's yeah, it's really it's really great. 
Oh, that's, that's I love this. This is like my favorite part of every week. <laughs> um, besides the our little segment of you know what's making us happy mm. this week, that's what's next. Um, and so I haven't laughed so much in months as I did recording one of the kids' videos yesterday. We did um, we made like stick puppets of Beauty and the Beast, and um. You may, well, you know, um, Lisa Lalamondi, yeah. yeah. she's working at the library now, and she's playing the Beast, and our uh, program coordinator, Emily, is playing Beauty, and I'm the narrator, and I thought I would play you a snippet so that you could get a, an idea about um, what we're getting up to over here, and we just, in, in the clip, we, Lisa surprised us all with her... Um, dramatic <laughs> interpretation of the beast <laughs> roaring so uh we were just we could barely keep it together so i thought i'd play it for you and hopefully you can hear it well enough we'll see here oh beast you can't leave me i love you then the beast rose up and transformed into a human prince your love has broken the spell a long time ago. <laughs> Maybe it's more should You're be so, less beast. Yeah, 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 check it down. <laughs> so, could you hear that? Yes. <laughs> she, because, you know, she, she had been the beast, but she was supposed to have turned <laughs> into the prince, but he he retained his beastliness. <laughs> So, so that was definitely what's making me happy this week. Oh, let's see. (laughs) Well, like I said, I get to play in a beautiful garden with giant sunflowers, which by the way, everybody, the site is actually open. The trails are open and the visitor center is um, limited with the number of people who can go in, but it's open Wednesday through Sunday, but we have giant sunflowers and so many different kinds of butterflies and dragonflies that it's part of my job to run around and take pictures of. So that makes me happy. Uh, <laughs> yes. And I, um, I got to make um, an elderflower um, syrup. Uh, elderflowers are in mm. bloom. And um, my brother-in-law made me a super delicious elderflower um, syrup cocktail, which made me extremely happy mm. um so <laughs> yeah <laughs> maybe that should be another segment like what are you drinking Butterflies now Butterflies <laughs> and cocktails <laughs> <laughs> so what is elderflower syrup yeah that's like? a really good question um if you get a chance if you um know what an elderberry you know tree looks like they're in bloom everywhere they have big white Umbrals is, it's not actually an umbral, but that's the only word that's coming to mind. So all you bought those people out there, you're <laughs> correcting me right now. But um, so they have these beautiful white umbrals <laughs> and if you smell them, they smell beautiful and that's what it tastes like. But it's not, it's it's kind of a delicate taste, um, but not, not, mm-hmm. um, not one that I can necessarily relate to another flavor. Um, huh. but they're, they're really good. And the, the flowers, if you dry them and drink them hot in tea, um, they are, um, they actually are really helpful for, um, breaking fevers. They're really gentle. So like for kids, they're, they're a good one. And so they're, they're just like a really mild, mm-hmm. mild tasting flower. I am yeah. Concerned. The smell. We have elder growing in the garden too. It showed up and we let it stay. So if you come out to Caddo, you can, you know, take a whiff. <laughs> I will. I will. <laughs> I also want to try one of those. Yeah, well. Too, so that but, uh, for sure. <laughs> maybe not. On the backyard. Not, not well <laughs> maybe not at work. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to thank you so much for doing this. And um, it's been lovely to talk to you. And we're going to keep doing this uh, every Friday. So um, a new episode will come out every week. And I have been loving having guests. So I think I'm going to keep doing that. Um, So uh, thank you again. And 
All right. Well, thanks, Crystal. It was fun. Yeah. Thank you.